Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and I'm down here today in the lowland rainforest of Peru and I thought I'd share with you three tips to use flash in a better way. So right now I'm trying to photograph a southern chestnut-tailed ant bird that skulks around in the, in the rainforest here. It's down in the shady part and I really need flash to get a good shot. Now one of the most important things when you're using flash is to be able to control the power of the flash. I get a lot of times people I, people say, oh, I don't like using flash, it just looks all blown out and it's too bright. And, and very often that the case is that people are not knowing how to control the flash and turn it down when you need to, turn it up when you need to. So the first thing, first tip, is to be able to control the power of the flash. So if you're in ETTL mode, one way you can do that is actually up on the flash itself. You can control the power plus or minus stops. So you might want to go to like minus two stops, for example, on the flash, and that might look a little bit better. Personally, I don't usually control the power of the flash up here. I like to use the flash exposure compensation button, which on my 7D is right here. It's the flash symbol plus minus. And by hitting that, I can then control the power of the flash. So you can see I've got it on minus two and a third stops. You can also do it through the menus or through the quick command dial, but the important thing is that you know one way to control the power of your flash. All right, tip number two for using flash. Not particularly in this instance, but a second tip is to know when to switch from ETTL to manual mode. Manual mode can be a really useful way of using flash, but you need to know when to use it. One example would be, for example, if you're shooting up against bright sky. The metering of the flash is going to think, wow, it's a very bright scene, I don't need much flash at all, and it's going to put out just a tiny amount of flash. But the truth is that when you're shooting up against the sky, you probably want a lot of flash to be able to illuminate your subject, in my case the bird, and to be able to fill in the subject so that it looks like a more balanced exposure. So in that case, ETTL, even if I crank the flash up to plus three stops, it might not be enough. I might need to switch over into manual mode and use it at full power or half power flash. So that's tip number two. All right, tip number three is something that I see a lot of people struggle with when they're using flash, and that is they'll be using flash when it's reasonably bright out, and all of a sudden the pictures look really bright and they say, oh, I've overflashed the shot. It's, I hate using flash, I've overflashed it. But the truth is that all cameras have what's called a flash sync speed. And usually it's about one two fiftieth of a second. And if the actual exposure that you need is more than that, let's say for example, it's one one thousandth of a second would be the correct exposure. If you don't have the flash on high speed sync mode, on Nikon it's called uh, FP flash mode. If you don't have it on auto FP in Nikon or high speed sync in Canon, then the camera gets locked up at 1 250th of a second. So you should have had 1 1000th of a second, but you got stuck at 1 250th of a second, meaning you, un you overexposed the ambient light by two full stops. And that's why your picture's so bright, not because you put too much flash. So if you're shooting in a time when it's brighter than 1 250th of a second, you need to put on high speed sync or auto FP mode in order to get the correct exposure. All right, so there's three tips to use flash in a more professional way to get better results. I hope those help you. Be sure to check out my ebook on flash, a guide for nature photographers. I'm going to try to get some shots.